Hey guys, in this video, let's talk about using the z-test for proportions. There are quite some interview questions related to this topic. You might get interview questions to compare clicks through rates of an advertisement of two groups of users. Another example is that the interviewer might ask you to derive a confidence interval for the probability of getting heads from a series of coin tosses. As you can see, uh, these, for these questions, you need to use the z-test for proportions to conduct the hypothesis test and draw conclusions. In this video, we will focus on three topics. Uh, the first one is why we use the z-test for proportions. Some people get confused by this, so I want to clarify this point first. And then we will talk about the one proportion z-test and two proportion z-test. By the end of this video, you will have a pretty good understanding of using the z-test for proportions. Let's get right into it. All right, the first topic I want to focus on is why we want to use z-test for proportions. So some people get confused by this and they don't know if we should use a z-test or t-test for proportions. So I want to clarify this point first. The typical one and two sample proportions tests are of this form. The test statistic is D over S, where D is the difference between a proportion and a constant, or the difference between two proportions, and S is an estimated standard deviation of D. Based on Slutsky's theorem, as long as the denominator S converges in probability to that unknown standard deviation sigma D, then D over S approximately normally distributed. Therefore, we have some justification of treating the test statistic as asymptotically normal, but we don't really have any justification for treating it as t-distributed. So theoretically, we don't use t-test to test the proportions, and there's no good argument that t-distribution should be better than the z-distribution as an approximation to the distribution of the test statistic. But t-tests are sometimes used in practice to test proportions. That is not entirely wrong because the results from a t-test is similar to that of a z-test for large samples. Now let's move forward to one proportion z-test. We use one proportion z-test when we want to compare a proportion of a population to a constant. Let's say p is the success rate or proportion of a large number n of independent Bernoulli trials, and p hat is the observed success rate, that is, the number of observed successes over the total number of trials. When the sample contains at least 10 successes and 10 failures, it will be reasonable to use a normal approximation of a binomial distribution. So we know that np hat follows a binomial distribution with n numbers of trials and p is the success rate. np hat also follows a normal distribution with mean equals np and variance is npq, where q is 1 minus p. So p hat itself follows a normal distribution with mean p and variance is p 1 minus p over n. So we know all this even before we conduct any hypothesis test. In terms of one proportion test, the hypothesis look like this. The null hypothesis is p equals p0, and the alternative hypothesis is p is not the same as p0. Pretty simple, right? Under our null hypothesis, we know that the test statistic follows a standard normal distribution. This is what the test statistic looks like. It's p hat minus p0 over square root of p0 1 minus p0 over n. Based on this, we can calculate the observed z statistic and compare it with the z critical value. If the observed z statistic is larger than the critical z value, then we can reject the null hypothesis. Now let's look at the example using the z test for one proportion test. Let's say we want to estimate the clicks rate p of users on ads. Suppose that we have an algorithm for ad selection and we like to estimate the clicks rate p of users on the ads selected by this algorithm. Given that we have access to a thousand users and observed a clicks rate is p hat equals 0.2, we set a significance level alpha of 5%. Our null hypothesis in this case is p equals 0.15. 
Here's how we can use Python to run this hypothesis. It's pretty simple. So we know our p0, in this case, is 0.15. We have a total of 1,000 observations, and the p-hat is 0.2. Based on p0, we can calculate sigma, which is p0 multiplied by 1 minus p0 over n, and then take the square root of this quantity. So we can get the observed z-score is p-hat minus p0, over sigma. We can compare the observed z-score, in this case, it's close to 4.43, to the critical z-score, is 1.96. And obviously, the observed z-score is larger than the critical z-score, so we reject the null hypothesis. Because the test statistic follows a standard normal distribution, we can use it to derive the confidence interval for a proportion. A level 1 minus alpha, 100% confidence interval for proportion p is p hat plus or minus z alpha over 2 multiplied by sigma, which is p hat multiplied by 1 minus p hat over n. Here we don't have any p0. We only need to use p hat to get the confidence interval of the true proportion p. Let's an example to derive the confidence interval of clicks rate on ads. We'll continue to use the previous example, and here we don't need to use any p0. We can calculate sigma using p hat. It's p hat multiplied by 1 minus p hat over n, and then we take the square root of this quantity. And then we can get margin of error is the critical z score multiplied by sigma. It's actually this part in this equation. So we know the point estimate is p hat, and the margin of error is this quantity. And then we can get the lower bound of this confidence interval, which is p hat minus margin of error, and the upper bound is p hat plus margin of error. So that's how we can get the confidence interval of clicks rate on ads. Finally, let's look at two proportions z test. We use two proportions z test when we want to compare one proportion with another proportion. Basically, proportions p1 and p2 of two populations. Here's our two hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that p1 is the same as p2, and the alternative hypothesis is that p1 is not the same as p2. So under the null hypothesis, the two proportions are the same. Similarly to the one proportion case, uh, we can get the distribution of p1 hat and p2 hat. We know that p1 hat follows a normal distribution with mean p1, and variance is p1, 1 minus p1 over n1. We can also get the distribution of p2 hat, which is a normal distribution with mean p2, and variance is p2 multiplied by 1 minus p2 over n2. We can also get the difference between these two proportions, which should also follow a normal distribution. And the mean becomes p1 minus p2, and the variance is the sum of the two variances. Under the null hypothesis, p1 is the same as p2, so our test statistic follows a standard normal distribution. Here's what the test statistic looks like. It's p1 hat minus p2 hat over square root of p hat 1 minus p hat 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. p hat is a pooled proportion. It's basically a weighted mean of these two proportions p1 and p2. It's k1 plus k2 over n1 plus n2. It's basically the total number of successes over the total number of trials across these two samples. The reason that the test statistic follows a standard normal distribution is basically uh, because of this. We know that p1 hat minus p2 hat follows a normal distribution. And we also know that based on the null hypothesis, p1 is the same as p2. So this quantity follows a standard normal distribution under the null hypothesis. One thing worth noting is that in many statistical programs, the default is to estimate the two proportions separately, meaning that they use unpooled proportions. So then the test statistic becomes uh, p1 hat minus p2 hat over square root of p1 hat 1 minus p1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat over n2. So they don't use put proportion.
Both of these work. You can use either one of these to conduct the hypothesis test. But knowing that under the null hypothesis, P1 is the same as P2, so preferably we should use the put proportion because the two proportions are the same under the null hypothesis. Now let's look at an example to compare the click-through rates of two algorithms. Suppose that we have two algorithms that are using different strategies to show ads. In the first algorithm, we have a total of 30 clicks among 900 impressions. The clicks rate is 0 0.033. For the second algorithm, there were 20 clicks among 1,000 impressions. So the clicks rate is 2%. So based on the data we gathered, we can now run a hypothesis test to see if the two proportions are the same. In this case, the first sample has 900 data points and the observed uh, proportion is 0 0.033. And the second sample has 1,000 data points with the observed uh, proportion 0 0.02. We can get the difference between the two observed proportions and calculate the pooled proportion, which is the total number of uh, clicks over the total number of impressions. Based on the pooled proportion, we can also get the pooled standard deviation. In this case, it's P1 minus P multiplied by 1 over Nx plus 1 over Ny, and we take square root of this quantity. We can also calculate the unpooled standard deviation, but again, we should use the pooled proportion in this case because under the null hypothesis, Px is the same as Py. So we can get the observed this score using D over pooled standard deviation. And in this case, it's 0 0.69. Uh, it's less than the critical Z score. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and we conclude there's no significant difference between the two clicks rates of algorithms. Similar to the one proportion Z test, we can derive the confidence interval for the difference between two proportions. There's an important thing to note here. Typically, we use unpooled proportions instead of pooled estimate of proportions to derive the confidence interval. The reason is that while the hypothesis testing procedure is based on the null hypothesis, the confidence interval approach is not based on that assumption. So a level 1 minus alpha, 100% confidence interval of P1 minus P2 is P1 hat minus P2 hat plus or minus the margin of error, which is z alpha over 2 square root of p1 hat 1 minus p1 hat over n1 plus p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat over n2. This part is basically the square root of the sum of variance of these two samples. Finally, let's look at an example how to derive the confidence interval of the difference between clicks rates of two algorithms. So it's pretty simple, we just continue using the previous example. Uh, we can get the margin of error, which is a critical z-score, multiplied by the unpooled standard deviation. We should use the unpooled standard deviation instead of the pooled standard deviation. And then we obtain the lower bound of the confidence interval, which is d, the difference between the two observed clicks rate minus margin of error, and the upper bound is d plus margin of error. So that's how we can obtain the confidence interval of the difference between two clicks rates. Awesome, in this lesson you learned z-test for proportions. We have talked about why using the z-test instead of t-test for proportions, and also we talked about the test statistic and the testing procedure for one proportion z-test as well as two proportions z-test. I hope you learned something new from this video. I will see you in the next one.